Now we come to the last two talks on ophthalmoplasty, and we have Dr. J K Das, controversies in management of orbital and uh, optical canal fracture, and we have Dr. Akshay Nair as well. This would be our last talk, thus. Yeah. No problem. Thank you, Akshay. Okay, I already make short my presentation. I just omit video, etc., because it's already discussed lots. So just okay. So that uh, there is some controversies on uh, that is in a or management of orbital fracture as well as the optic. Uh, optic uh, the canal <clears throat> those controversies are either glue or not glue what type of material and what time <clears throat> we should go for intervention there is a some as per the standard book says so <clears throat> we can wait for 14 days uh, we can go for and we can for 7 to 14 days is the one of the best time and some says there may be more ischemia and ultimately there may be a residual diplopia in such scenario. But there is no controversy at all. One is an applied anatomy. This is the only one for any surgeon that is for before we touching, we should know thoroughly what are the things in applied anatomy. There is a no controversy on. Controversies are a process. Generally, nowadays, we, everyone, we are very much comfortable with transconjunctival. We are not going for any other approach apart from the transconjunctival. Whatever, we will go for a transconjunctival. There is no controversy. But another big is issues are the transnasal. As mm, medical legal point of view, we are not too much tuned or we are not certified for doe and do nasal. So that's a, another big one. So <coughs> should I <coughs> should we prefer tense conjunctival or tense nasal? Tense conjunctival, <coughs> another another difficulty with the tense conjunctival is there is a more. One is previous trauma, second one is the our surgical trauma. We will induce surgical trauma a little bit more on the orbit because it's a close one. Over that, in a tense nasal, there is advantage that we can approach it like a from the outside, like an airstrike of thing. There is a biggest advantage with a tense nasal with the endoscope we can approach. Let there what visualization is one of the problem. Just like a war in between a, a the ground stuff and the airstrike. In the ground, we can details we can tackle, but in the airstrike, it can pinpoint some target. But now it is era of the airstrike, so we can, I think, go for a endonasal in some cases, especially in case if there's an optic canal is involved. So I am just uh, talking about uh, some controversies about the incision. So that implant migration may be one of the cause. In such cases, should we go for up to the maximum extent of the injury or we restrict one or two mm ahead? That's another because to avoid buccal migration, once we reach the posterior extent, we should not go beyond. Otherwise, there may be a slippage. Of course, we can take care by that as a glue or by a screw. But both are expensive, and glue also is not easily available in all the areas sometimes. So the limit of posterior extents. Anyway, we should not go beyond. So that's my point. So there is uh, some controversies regarding incision, just the anterior orbital, I has already mentioned, as we are running behind. <coughs> so uh, periosteal elevation. <laughs> so periosteal elevation that we can implant that uh, whatever the material, so we can just uh, to protect optic nerve and the other vital structures. So in each and every case, meticulous periosteal elevation is the must. There is no other way about the periosteal elevation. So, though there is some controversies, but ideally there should not be any controversy on periosteal elevation. Another big controversies are surgery versus conservative. As per the standard books, there are three criteria. One is there is anophthalmos, more than 2 mm, 
if there is a, uh, 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 some uh, problems, diplopia or flexor modem like that. But question is that at what time we are examining an ophthalmos. The amount of injury, if there is a more edema, more injury, there may not be you know, an ophthalmos. So to assess that nowadays we can rely on the radiology. On the radiological basis only we can go for, not only by a clinical examination. Proper radiological version we can decide surgery. And if there is a trapped muscle, it is trapped partially or full. If there is a partially trapped, so it needs urgent care. Especially in case of a pediatric, there may be other signs and symptoms. There is a, some in the ICU, few kids are admitted, ICU. When we retrospectively analyze, it is due to the trapped muscle only. It was undetected, it was treated in ICU, unstable, unstable pulse, or whatever. We are sometimes patients may put in ventilator also. That is some mystery. So that controversy, we can go for a meticulous examination. And even with the ventilator also, now it is very, very safe to do a CT scan. That's a, another. And so conservatives, I think that is a so much meticulous surgery nowadays with the help of that thing. I think we can, if patient wants, then we can go for a surgery at the earliest. Tense conjunctival approach is in our hand, of course, that is in our hand, but as I already mentioned, there is a edema. So second trauma is a, one of the common, but it is easier, cost effective. Moment we will start from endonatal, the cost for endoscope is another. Even in some cases, um, we can go for a light anesthesia, light GA. But in case of a, we have a long duration GA to a endonasal because the preparation time is very, very long. Yeah, in endonasal, of course, by an anti surgeon. So, primary surgeon, not by ophthalmologist. Primary surgeon is by an anti surgeon. So, this is the, one of the biggest, but very, very interesting is that if we need a, some optic nerve issues, if that vascular issues or some bony fragment, etc., better it can be taken care of by endoscope. Then it will be very, very easier. So there should not be any such uh, ego problem with us on that. If we think for a patient's perspective, patient's point of view. Again, another issues are blunt versus forcep. So during that one very crucial step is that moment we remove that a, in the trap, fat or muscle whatever from the flexor side few says we can for safety for easy we can use a, a gentle by a forcep but i prefer generally by blunt blunt dissector so it will uh, it will avoid further vascular damage and it's really very very helpful by two hand technique so that is depends on the surgeons if someone comfortable with the forcep he or she can go for forcep otherwise by blunt those are the um, blunt. Another big debate, absorbable or non-absorbable implant. Absorbable implants are a little bit costly and not easily available. This is one of the disadvantages are very, very advantageous for pediatric age group. We don't want any further more surgery for removal, etc. If we put, if I put a, a titanium plate, whatever, that screw cost is very high. And parents will ask what, what happened with my kids with the plate or that. And another big issues are it will prevent both the bone growth. With the titanium, with the screw, it may prevent further bone growth. So that's the reason preferably the now take home message for us is that is a observable one which is available now. So we can we can treat by observable, not by one. And of course, another one is that uh, with die, with screw or without screw. I, I devise one, next I will show you. That one with a mat four, I am making here a one, just a thread in posterior and that. Uh, like a, uh, in IOL, we are using a IOL capsule like that. I am prefer, preferring one technique, like in posterior pole also, I am making one loop, and anteriorly also, I make one loop. So both the loops can fix without the screw. That's a, I 
already mentioned screw versus glue definitely glue is better than screw closer of course will a light closer if we if we uh, approach to orbit is my time is up or in shortly i'm closing another big debate is with pl negative can we go ahead with optic canal decoding prison so it's a big debate some surgeon prefers yes it may improve fission may improve but controversy is that fission improve due to the um, optic and, and uh, canal decompression or it is due to the normal process that's still debatable so those are the very complex situation also we can achieve by endonasal that's one so in my conclusion is and last slide i am telling endonasal is better if needed optic can optic canal decompression less traumatic but costly need multi specialty of course thank you uh, thank you dr das i think it was a very good uh, guidance that how and where how we should go ahead thank you very much it is a good teaching thank you uh,